Amen. Before you sit down, turn around and shake somebody by the hand. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Tonight, I'm preaching the book of James. Chapter 5. James chapter 5. And I want to read. Amen. Verse 13 again. Is any among you afflicted? And I like to ask the question. You don't have to lift your hand. Are there anybody here or under the sound of my voice, you are afflicted? Are you afflicted? Think about that for a few moments. Let him pray. If you're afflicted, you pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. In other words, praise amen to the Lord. Now, in verse 13, you will find in six verses, with 13 through 17, 18, in six verses, you will find the word pray, prayer, or pray seven times. Seven times. I believe God is trying to tell you and I, amen, to pray. Seven times in six verses. Amen. And all through the Bible, the, the Bible gives example about praying. God wants you and I to pray. There's something about praying. Prayer is powerful, church. And the devil will do everything he can to hinder you from praying. He'll try to get you just as busy as a bee. He don't want the church, he don't want his people, uh, God's people praying. But oh, if we could just take the time to pray. Uh, hallelujah. You'll see a difference uh, in your life. Glory to God. Now it didn't say, amen, pray an hour, nowhere in the Bible. Does it teach you to pray 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour? And, and I've heard people boast about how long they pray. Oh, I pray so long. Amen. Every day or at least once a week. But it said if any among you are afflicted, let him pray. Hallelujah. And it don't teach us when we need to pray. Some people pray in the morning. Some pray at noon. And some pray when the sun goes down. That was the custom, amen, to the Jews to pray three times a day. Oh, but the main thing is to pray. My Bible teaches me to pray without ceasing. I don't never, amen, put a time limit, amen, to watch a watch, and, amen, or time myself how long I pray. Hallelujah. One of the greatest evangelists that ever came to America, he was from Europe, amen, you might have heard of him, Smith Wigglesworth. They asked him, now let me tell you about Smith Wigglesworth. One time his wife died, he grabbed her, pulled her out of the cast, slammed up the wall and said, live, and she came alive. He come up on a man one time that had no legs, just had stumps, and he prayed for him with legs. Amen. I'm talking about people wrote about these things. Amen. After he died and went to heaven. Many, many miracles. He was a man of prayer. Amen. But he said, they asked him one time, How long do you pray, Brother Swicker with Wigglesworth? Amen. They thought he might have stayed in hours in prayer. Do you pray hours? He said, No. Do you pray an hour? He said, no. Do you pray 30 minutes? No. How about 15 minutes? Amen. He said, I never put a time. But he said, I never go 15 minutes without praying. Amen. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. That means never stop. You can ride down the road in your car praying. Amen. You can pray. Amen. While you're sitting in your home. While you're walking. I like to get out and walk. Hallelujah. And pray. Or oh, sometimes I walk back and forth. Amen. In a room praying. Sometimes I get down on my knees. Sometimes I lay flat before God. Stressed out. The Bible don't teach us a certain position to get into. But I do believe. Amen. It is humbling when you bow and get down on your knees. Glory to God. But staying down there, there's nowhere recorded how long. But Jesus did 
one time come back to his disciple. He said, can you wait one hour? They fell asleep. I'm telling you, uh, one preacher said one time, if I watch television for an hour, I believe in giving God an hour. Amen. If you do anything else, amen for yourself. Hey man, you need to give to God the equal time. But I would give God 100%. Hallelujah. And I can truthfully say about my wife, hey man, she goes through her daily time praying. Glory to God. We pray continually, church, and that's what you and I need to do. Amen. All the time. Either we're praying or we're praising. And I'm here to tell you why I believe we need to be thankful. Amen. You know, if you make it to your destination nowadays without a drive-by shooting, amen, without an accident, you need to praise God. I'm telling you, there's power also in the praise of the Lord. I don't want to eat a mouthful of food, hallelujah, and then see starving people in Africa, amen, that, that they would just be thrilled to death to get your and my scraps. Hallelujah. Every time we eat, we pray over it. And you better pray over it. And you, you better pray over the water you drink. You never know when somebody is going to poison our wells. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, I thank God for daily water. I thank God for my daily bread. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, the Bible said for four people be unholy, they'll be unthankful. I'm telling you, we need to praise Him. We need to be thankful for what He did. I don't know about you, but I thank God about 2,000 years ago, a man went on the cross and he died that I can live. Glory to God. Do you love Him tonight? Thank you, Jesus. I feel the sweet, sweet, sweet Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go back over. Amen, what I just read. Hallelujah. In verse 13, any among you afflicted. I ask you, is anybody here tonight afflicted? I didn't see a hand go up. But afflict, afflicted means, and you can go to your dictionary, Webster. Hallelujah. It means ill plight. Number two, distressed. Is anybody here? Amen distressed so you're afflicted if you are i ask you a question are you afflicted no hand went up if you're in distress you are afflicted and the bible says pray glory to god oh i don't know how i'm gonna get through this one number three amen a word afflicted means suffer hardships has anybody or anybody going through any hardships well, you afflicted. You need to pray. Hallelujah. And then, any trouble other than sickness, that's the definition of afflicted. Hallelujah. So when Jesus, hallelujah, said, you know, this is the Word of God. Amen. Who is Jesus? The Word of God was made flesh. Hallelujah. So when Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it's Jesus. Somebody said, well, that's man's writing. No, men wrote the Bible as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is any among you afflicted? Let me ask the question again. Are you in distress? Are you suffering any kind of hardship? <clears throat> any trouble at all? How about car troubles? How about family troubles? Hey Amen. How about just trouble? How about financial trouble? How about it? All kinds of trouble. Hey Amen. That's the definition of afflicted. How do, you know, you need to read your Bible, and then sometimes you need to squeeze every word. You need to look up, get the meaning, the definition of every word, and you'll get a greater meaning out of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I've been afflicted many times. Amen. I suffer hardships. Amen. I tell you, troubles everywhere. Troubles on every side. But thanks be unto God, we can pray and pray it away. Glory to God. I feel the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number 14. Let's go back to that. He said, here's another question. Is any sick among you? 
This means, is anybody here sick? Sick? Okay, a few hands went up. So I'm preaching to you, and I'm preaching to everybody that didn't lift their hand. More to the ones that didn't. You know, sometimes people go to the church, they think the pastor's preaching to these people over here. And these people over here think they preaching to them over there. And then they think they're preaching to people that's not here, to the church down the street. <laughs> Baptist church we was in this morning. Amen. When uh, the pastor preached, he wasn't preaching to us. He wasn't uh, uh, preaching down the street to other churches and the message assemblies of God. Amen. Well, in a way he was. Amen. When we preached, we preached to everybody. And you know, just about everybody that lives in sin thinks the preacher, when he points his finger, pointing right at them. How does the preacher know how you live this week? But the Holy Ghost does. God's got an all-seeing eye. Hallelujah. So is any among you sick? Hallelujah. Oh, he said. That, amen. This means, sick means weak. Any weak people. If you're weak, you're sick. Spiritually, physically, weak means you're sick. And the writer here said God wants you, amen, to pray. Hallelujah. I know somebody can make you strong in the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. All right. I ain't getting a whole lot of amens tonight. Also, sick means to be feeble. Anybody here feeble? If you're feeble, you're sick. And it also just means sick. Amen. Oh, it says, let him call for the elders of the church. Hallelujah. And, hey, you supposed to pray if you're afflicted. You supposed to pray if you're sick. Some people like for other people to pray for them. Amen. I like that song my family sang sometimes. Amen. You can pray your way out of trouble. Amen. You pray. Two times he says you pray. Hallelujah. But if you're like this, he also said, let him call for the elders of the church. You know, people are going to the hospital morning call the pastor. People are, are going through sickness all week long and don't even call their pastor. They don't even call for the elders of the church. You know what I like to say? Stay sick. If you don't do what the Bible tells you to do, amen, if you're so weak you can't call, even have somebody to call for you. Hallelujah. But let me read the Word of God. I'm, I'm meddling now. Hallelujah. Let them, hallelujah, the elders, amen, the church, the elders, let them pray over him. Hallelujah. Anoint him with oil. You see us get that little oil out? It's right here. Two places. Even in Mark. Amen. It says anointed with the oil. The disciples anointed with oil and people was healed. There's something about that. Glory to God. Let him pray anointing him with oil. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Glory to God. There's power in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that scripture is found in Mark 6, 13. Hallelujah. Where it referenced to. Amen. Where they prayed. Amen. And anointed them with oil. New Testament. Glory to God. Now verse 15. And the prayer of faith. Glory to God. Just don't pray, but pray in faith. Glory to God. I preached not long ago. Amen. Jesus said, have faith in God. You know if we'll put our faith in God like we do the doctor. The doctor give you a bottle of pills and tell you to take, amen, one, three times a day. How do you do that? You know a lot of people obey the doctor more than do the Bible before they do God. But I'm here to tell you if you'll learn to obey God and hey, you pray and then when you get sick, Amen. Call for the elders of the church and let them anoint you with oil. Pray in the prayer of faith. Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, I feel good tonight. And the prayer of faith. You have got to have faith when you pray. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, he said, Amen. It shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. Glory to God. I remember one time, Amen. I got a call, and it wasn't one of my church members. Hallelujah, because I wasn't pastor and I was evangelizing. But I was living where I'm living now. Got a call. A young man, his mother went to the Mulberry Church of God. And they lived in Plant City. And that boy couldn't hold nothing down. And he'd been that way for a long time. If I remember right, a few weeks. How he was curled up in the bed, couldn't drink no water, couldn't hold no soup, couldn't eat nothing. Oh, but they called for an elder. So I got in my car and I started praying. All the way over to Plant City. Got to the house. Amen. Got out of my car praying. I felt the Lord when I got out of the car. There were some in the house praying. Hallelujah. And when I got to his bedside, I just said, get up. In the name of Jesus, that boy straightened up, jumped out of that bed, amen, all strength restored. I'm telling you, there's power in prayer. If you can't get a hold of God for yourself, call an elder. And the Bible says, well, where two or three, amen, touching anything, in the name of the Lord, it shall be. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, I didn't have to pray. I've been praying all over the all the way over there. And I felt the prayers of the saints. The mother had some other people there praying. Glory to God. And so there was no need to beg the Lord. Hallelujah. It was time to put your faith into action. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead. It's good to have faith, but you need to have works. You need to believe when you pray. He said pray with faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, I'm going to pray, but they head to the doctor before they uh, give Jesus a chance to heal. They'd rather give that doctor in that hospital. You know what? Somebody goes to the hospital with anything nowadays. Or say they go to the hospital with a heart attack. In a few weeks, they go to get their mail and open it up, and then they have another one. $54,000. That's just for the the hospital, and you, you just stayed there two days. The best hotel in the world don't charge that much. And then a few days, you think that's over with. Then a few weeks later, you get one from the doctor. And then you have another heart attack. And, and then all the prescriptions, you have another one. My Lord. I'm here to tell you, they'd they rather give their money, amen, to doctors and hospitals and clinics, hallelujah, than the Lord. I'm telling you, we need to put God first. Can you say amen? If you're sick, call for the elders of the church. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it over and over and over. God answers prayer when we pray in faith. Hallelujah. Can y'all stand a minute and praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm not through. I just feel like Amen. Having a little commercial break. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's go on. Let's go on. Verse 16. Hallelujah. Preaching tonight from James. Hallelujah. Chapter 5. Now I'm in verse 16. The effectual. You may be seated. The effectual. Hallelujah. Prayer. Of a righteous man. Listen to this. The effectual means unceasing. In other words, continually. That's effectual. Hallelujah. Fervent prayer means warm. A, a veil of mud. Sincere. Warm. With compassion. With feeling. Oh, God just healed her. Oh, God healed him. Amen. No. Praying like it's your mama. Praying like it's your child. Praying like it's your mother, brother or sister. Praying like it's you. Amen. You, when you get sick, you want somebody to have some compassion. Pray with a warm, sincere, fervent. Hallelujah. That's what it means. Pray with sincerity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Do you love him tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, sincere of a righteous man. You know, I tell people if you don't live right, ain't much you need to pray. God can't move through sin. I don't know who this is for tonight. Somebody asked me from a far away the definition, what it means when a man looks upon a woman and he commits adultery in his heart. So I told him what it meant. If you see me out of the church, I might tell you. <laughs> but you can't get a hold of God if you got a lust demon in you that long. You can't get a hold of God when you've been flipping through the TV, hey man, and find something ungodly. And look on it. Or hear those four letter words. You can't get a hold of God. Let me tell every devil something. My ears is not a garbage can. I don't want to hear your filthy jokes. I don't want to hear that, hey man, filthy language. The Bible said don't let no evil communication proceed out of your mouth. That's right. Keep it holy. Yeah. Keep it clean. You'll never know. Amen. The fervent prayer of a righteous person. Not an unrighteous person. You can't live like the devil all week and then all of a sudden, amen, emergency, something bad happens to somebody in the family, and all of a sudden you get a halo over your head, all of a sudden you get righteous. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Do you love him tonight? But when we pray, even when we anoint people for all, amen, the elders of the church, amen, we both to pray in faith. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, people tell me sometimes, seeing and believing. If I could just see a miracle, if I could just see, hallelujah, that's believing. No, believing is seeing. If you believe God for it, you can see it. Hallelujah. I'm trying my best to preach with that fervent spirit. Warm, I love you. I want to see you blessed. You know, it's awful to go through life for years and never get nowhere with God. Never seeing anything good from God. Always depressed. Always sick. Always down and out. God don't want you to be that way. I'm not a prosperity preacher. But the Bible said you, you both are prosper as your soul prospers. Oh, he'll never see the righteous forsaken. That's him, Jesus, or his seed. That's us. Begging. We're not beggars. The Bible said we're not the tail, we're the head. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God bless you if you live right. Amen. Faith without works is dead. I read to you tonight about Elias. You talking about a man of God? I love to read about Elijah. And I love to read about his servant, Elisha. Elisha received a double portion of what Elijah had. Oh, and Elijah had the power of God. But the Bible said, I read to you tonight, hallelujah, Elias was a man that prayed because of sin. He said, Lord, the Bible said he prayed earnestly that it rained not. And you know what the Bible said? God heard that man pray and God, he said, God stopped the rain. These people are living like the devil. In other words, they're not living right. They don't need the blessings. Just stop the rain. You know what God did? He stopped the rain for three and a half years. And everything started burning up, drying up. No, no, nothing was producing. Famine like they never seen was on the land. You know, you need to thank God for all this rain we had lately. God knows, amen, what's under this earth. He knows how much water we need, not you and I. I never complained about the rain. I never complained about the cold. I don't plan, complain about nothing. It ain't going to do you no good to complain about it anyway. You can't go outside, amen, and work. Maybe God wants you to get down on your knees and pray or read your Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, then the Bible said he prayed again. 
Hallelujah. I could preach on everything I mentioned tonight for a couple hours or all night long. And he prayed again. You know what you need to do? You need to live right, look right, talk right, and then pray again. And then the Bible said that God sent the rain and the earth gave, amen, its fruit. Hallelujah. God started praying. If you'll pray again, hallelujah, make up your mind. You're going to serve God. There ain't nothing. Angel wrote a song when she was 12 years old. Hallelujah. About how God took a mixed up ball of string. Just like a cat been playing with so many knots in it. Nobody would be able to untangle it. But I'm here to tell you, your life might be mixed up. Even with all kinds of knots in it. Like a ball of string. But I know somebody can take out every knot. I, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. I know somebody can straighten your life out. He just wanted you to pray. Pray and believe. Glory to God. There was a man in the third chapter of the book of Acts. The Bible says in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, he never walked and he was over 40 years old. Never felt his weight on his feet. He never took a step like my little friend here. He never walked. Somebody had to carry him. There was no social security. There was no welfare and food stamps. There was no kind of assistance at all. Hallelujah. Somebody had to bring him to a gate which the Bible calls beautiful. Hallelujah. And I, I pictured it like this. He had his little cup. The Bible says he was looking for arms. He was looking for somebody, maybe throw a quarter in. A quarter back then could have got him three meals. A quarter could have probably got him a new pair of shoes or a coat or a blanket, something to keep him warm. He was begging for arms, just a little bit of change. Hallelujah. But two holiness preachers came by. Glory to God. And their name was Peter and John. Hallelujah. And the man that was crippled, Never walked over 40 years. Looked upon them expecting to receive something. You know the church out there, they're looking. I mean the world's looking for the church. Hallelujah for help. Hallelujah. Oh, this man's legs was probably all twisted and mangled. Hallelujah. But Peter walked up to him with John. Glory to God. Listen to what Peter said. You can read it when you get home. Silver and gold have a none. In other words, man, I don't have anything to put in your cup. But such as I have. Glory to God. What did he have? He had an upper room experience. Peter and John was in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. Silver and gold have I none in modern talk, man. <laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. Glory to God. That was a prayer. Hallelujah. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's something about that name. Jesus, when you mention that name, devils tremble. There's something about that name. There's a power in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. If you're afflicted, shout Jesus. If you're sick, shout Jesus. Glory to God. There's something about that name. Glory to God. There's no other name a man can be saved except in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. In that verse, the man never received his healing. You can pray until you're blue in the face. You can push plates back seven days and still get no answer hallelujah when you pray you got to believe hallelujah you know what peter did 
the next verse, how it said Peter took the man by the right hand and the man said, Peter, Peter, Peter pulled him up. Not God. Peter pulled him up. Read your Bible when you get home. Everywhere in the Bible, church, Hallelujah, there was a miracle. Somebody had to do something. Faith without works is dead. Lifeless. Peter believed God. He believed God. Took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And the Bible said when he lifted him up, immediately strength came to his feet, his ankle bones. Glory to God. He did not have to go to physical therapy to learn how to walk. He never walked. He, never, he didn't know how to walk. He was born to cripple. Oh, but God got in his ankle bones, the Spirit of the Lord. And the Bible says he started walking. And not only did he walk, he started leaping. <laughs> oh, God, if that happened to you, you would leap to him. Somebody said, I don't believe in shouting. But don't get on the cloud with me when the rapture take place. Because I'm going to shout. Glory to God. I said, I'm going to shout. Glory to God. When I look into the eyes of the one that had mercy on me, I'm going to shout and praise his name. Glory to God. I'm going to holler to the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus for saving a wretch like me. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible said he went a walking and a leaping right on down to Daytona Beach. Right on down to the happy hour. Right on down to the disco. No. He went a walking and leaping right into the temple. He went right into the house of God. And if God's ever done for anything for you, you need to not to miss church. You every time the door's open, every time you can, woe unto you. Glory to God. If you go anywhere else when church time is home, you need to put God first. Glory to God. Unless you lay it flat on your back. Glory to God. And you cannot come. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you're able, you need that's one way you pay God back for all. He's done for you. I could have been the rapture of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. He went right on into the temple. Right on into the house of God. With Peter and John. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord today? The message tonight is pray. Pray. And you get your little group together. We want to hear some singing. Hallelujah. I just heard yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you love